Well, Joseph, it's been a, another busy week in the mutual sector in the UK. The, the headlines have been grabbed by uh, Co-op and the antics of its former chairman. Um, but today there's been news from Nationwide and they've uh, raised some money. Uh, tell us about that. Yeah, it's good to make another foray into mutuals because for every Co-op there is a Nationwide and with 15 million members, it was about double the size of the co-op. And yes, mutuals do have the perennial problem of not being able to raise external capital easily. But Nationwide think they can do it. They are issuing what are called core capital deferred shares. And the title should tell you there's something not quite um, very simple about this security. You know, it, it will count towards core capital so Nationwide will be able to you know, meet its obligations in terms of Basel III and so on. Um, you know, it's well capitalised you know, to begin with anyway. Uh, but it's the deferred and the shares part, which is uh, interesting, uh, because obviously it can't issue equity. Mm. Um, but it still needs something which is highly loss absorbing, uh, which is deeply subordinated. It can do all the stuff equity can. Mm. Uh, but the niggle is, uh, Building societies have to promise one member, one vote. Mm. And if you're an investor buying into this stuff, you would probably expect more votes the more of it you bought. Uh, that doesn't seem to be the case here. Mm. If you are an investing member in Nationwide with like £100 in your savings account, your voting power is still quite f favourable to the, you know, compared to the guy who's bought um, these um, deferred shares, mm. uh, you, know, you know, possibly. So well, what, what's the leave then nationwide state as a, as a, as a mutual? You, you have these investors who are going to put what nationwide hopes is 500 million pounds into it. They're buying something which is, looks a little bit like equity, but can't really be equity because it's a mutual and mm -hmm. it's not set up that way. It's, does nationwide still look like a mutual, do you think? Yeah, I mean, there should be a motto emblazoned on every regulator or every kind of bank kind of wall which is, you know, the terms of a security cannot fill in for actual policy or, you know, an actual spirit, in this case, a spirit of mutuality. Uh, if you look at Nationwide's half-year results, which are also out this month, um, I would argue uh, that it operates not really like a mutual in spirit anymore. Um, uh, very famously, um, Nationwide used to offer a mortgage which was, you know, fairly tightly um, linked to bank rate uh, for many years and it's a very, very popular mortgage. Uh, unfortunately, as time has passed, uh, Nationwide is now moving to a standard variable mortgage along with you know, all other banks really, uh, which will help its margin but will n maybe not be of you know, huge benefit to its members. So Nationwide perhaps not looking quite as, as mutual or as mutually beneficial mm. as, as it used to and, and as time progresses, may face more challenges to that mutual business model, a real contrast with the co-op, which is moving towards listed status as part of its reorganisation. Yeah. Joseph, thank you very much.